So why is it taking me so long to read Full Metal Alchemist? Well, the short answer is I have a lot of manga. And honestly, I always knew that I would like it because it doesn't get to be number one on Mal with the best anime series of all time without being good, right? But boy, was I not expecting to have this much to say about it. I mean, I was just so... No, no, we will get to it. We will get to that. We will get to that. I'm not ready yet. Honestly, I just have to start off by saying it was very refreshing to just jump into this story, right? We meet our the two brothers, the main characters, and they are already on their journey. They are already done some things. Done a lot of things. You know, because especially with Shonen, Seinen, any really manga title, we always start at the beginning most of the time. They're either choosing their Pokemon, getting off their island, about to begin their adventure, and we follow them from nobodies to champions, right? That is that is the shonen for sure trope stereotype that a lot of manga have, and it was just very refreshing to just kind of jump into this story and threw out little bits and pieces of their backstory to keep you intrigued and be like, what kind of characters are we following? What are their motivations? What have they done wrong? What have they done right? And it adds a layer of mystery to the backstory that kind of can be lost when you start at the beginning. I mean, literally, Edward and Al are already known as alchemists. One is known as the full metal alchemist. Oh, I see what you did there. They, they did the thing. They did the thing with the tide, with the thing. Did they, they did the thing. The genius of it is with the pacing of the story, we can literally hop right into, they're facing off basically against a cult leader with the Philosopher's Stone. No, not, not that Philosopher's Stone. This manga literally wastes no time telling you exactly what kind of themes we're about to see in this story. I mean, think about it. The first two chapters, the little first mini story is about a corrupt religious priest figure. And it's already asking these philosophical questions kind of about faith and science and, and blending the rules of this world. And as a reader, you're like, okay, what kind of rules are being set in place for this story? I mean, think about it. When your first story is something is kind of that can be heavy as a fake religious figure keeping this whole population down to seek power. It's pretty ballsy for an author for that to be their first story beat. And it's handled so incredibly well. While not only giving you this really incredible story and introducing you these characters throughout this. Because I think a lot of manga have that issue, right? They spend so much time trying to set up these main characters that the first portion of the story is always a little, the pacing can be off. And you hear it all the time, especially in the manga community and stuff like that. Like, let it set up, you know, give it three volumes, three volume rule. Because it does take a while for this, the author to usually find a pace. Check the boxes to start a manga series. And while it's checking the boxes, She's not losing vision in the story that she wants to tell. She's introducing you to these characters while posing the kind of themes that she wants to talk about and doing it in such a seamless way that it is so, it's so well done. I can't overstate that. I can't overstate how shocked I was and pleasantly surprised to kind of see like, oh, she nailed it. She figured it out. And then right after that, they go into this mining town. And can we just give Edward props? He turned that rubble into gold, got the corrupt dude. Then when he was leaving, hey, turned the gold back into rubble. Those little moments in the first handful of chapters, because this first volume is only six chapters in the Full Metal Edition. It adds depth to Edward immediately. Because if we look at the first two chapters, he crushes this girl's entire world, entire religion. And kind of just says, you have two good feet. Go go find the truth for yourself. And while there are comedic moments, Edward can kind of come off a bit cold. And right after that, the following chapter, the author makes Edward this like, yeah, he might be cold. But at the end of it, at his core, he is still the hero of our story. And I absolutely loved that they made the older brother the more hot-headed, kind of quick-tempered leader of the brothers. And his younger brother is this really stoic, kind of wise, 
suit of armor. I think that is so fantastic. The author is using not only like physical height difference and build to differentiate it, to put the little brother that is supposed to be protecting the big brother in this suit of armor, which if you don't know, suit of armor is usually known for protection. It's little things like that. It's little moments and character traits like that that the author already set up in six chapters that you know that they know exactly what kind of story they want to tell. They're not finding their way in the beginning. They know their way. And now it's just kind of like, let's ride with them through this path to tell this story. And don't get it mistaken. I think that Al is going to play a big part of this story because... Yeah, you're right. We should talk about it. So I think within this first volume, the story that I'll remember for sure, hard to forget, to be honest, been burned in my brain since I read it, is the Tucker family. Shoto Tucker, Nina, and Alexander the dog. Boy, what a turn that takes. And I really didn't expect a manga to go this dark this quickly. Like the fourth chapter? This is the story you're going to give The fourth chapter. You said, you know what we're going to do? Destroy your hearts and minds. That's what we're going to do. The fourth chapter. That's, that's what we're doing. That's what's happening. And it's not shock for shock value. I honestly think it's showing you how dark the brothers could have gone to save their mothers. It is the same coin, different sides. It is showing you that if the brothers didn't have each other, they're already on a thin line. They've lost literal limbs and body parts and whole bodies to basically play God. And I think if they didn't have each other to help balance them on this thin line, they're already at. They are moments away from turning into our main heroes to our main villains. And with each other, they're the ones that are balancing and keeping each other up from falling into the darkness that we see with the Tucker family. Because when we learn about the Tucker family and how this man used his own wife two years ago, basically to get grant and to get privilege and to get recognition from this alchemist world and he is so stressed out about oh it's coming up we're gonna lose the grant money you know no more grant money he turns and uses his own small child daughter and dog together honestly he is the epitome of cloud chasing <laughs> all right I'm trying to use comedy to levy it, you know, put some levity in this this subject matter. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. It's very serious. Boy, what a serious chapter. And Mr. Tucker is so worried about grants and prestige, and he does what every, I think, good villain in a story does. He just tries to justify it to Edward. We're the same. We're not that different. And then he goes into... It's for the betterment of humankind. Sacrifices have to be made. Trying to be like, no, I'm doing this for everyone. Sir, I'm going to be honest with you. You're doing it for yourself. And, and to destroy your family like that is unforgivable. Unforgivable, man. And that's what I meant when I said earlier, it is so refreshing. Refreshing? Weird word to use right at this very moment, but I'm going to use it. That in such a short time, this manga has posed so many philosophical questions. From corrupt figures to now, what's better for the progression of humanity and science? You know, what links are people willing to go for if they believe they're doing it to better the entire world? Delusion of grandeur. And those are heavy topics because I think that is very real world. Again, I'm, I'm not getting into it obviously in this review this is a fun review and about a great manga series we're not getting into that we're not doing that we're not nope nope it's heavy topics and it's only the fourth to fifth chapter in an entire series but honestly man if you read that chapter those two chapters and feel nothing i got nothing for you i don't know i don't know what happened to you okay i don't know i'm sorry all right because when she goes I mean, oh, heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreak. It is heartbreaking. My heart is broken. It's heartbreak. But the author doesn't waste this moment to build a main character up. When Al turns and says, if you say one more word, I'll be the one who snaps. She 
chill pumps chill pumps you realize that while edward is this hothead loud older brother and al who's always kind of been even in these three chapters kind of the more level-headed the wise one he has a point he has don't push me past this point he has a hulk moment you won't like me when i'm angry and you know when i was getting done with the five chapters i was like man this is this is really stellar. The pacing is fantastic. These characters are interesting. The world that they are building. If you want to kind of find out so much about the rules of this world with alchemist, science, religion. But honestly, besides some shadow moments, big bads had not really been introduced front and center. But then enters Scar. And we still don't know that much about him because he's introduced in the last half of the fifth chapter and the final chapter of this volume, chapter six. But we do know one thing. Boy, he doesn't mess around. He enters the scene by taking out one of the Tucker family, who deserves it. He deserves it by anger. And then he takes one out of mercy. And while he's painted as this bad guy, and this is just a theory. Like I said, I've only read six chapters. While he's painted as this bad guy, there's something about him that kind of makes him, there's more to his character immediately, just by that moment. Because you got to think, right? If he is this big, bad villain, he wouldn't speak the way he does. He wouldn't talk about this is a mercy. He would just go in there, be like, you're my mission. Bow, bow, bow. You're done. Just by adding those dialogues and those moments, the author's already put into question, is this the villain of the story? I personally could see... Again, six chapters in, it's a lot of things can change. I personally could see this not being the actual big bad villain. And even though he's known in this alchemist circle, and that's what they're talking about. Like, nobody really knows what he's about. We just know that he has a scar. Thus, we've called him Scar. It's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. And while this series has been hyped up beyond belief before I started reading this first volume, especially in the manga and anime community, it is if you are any part of this community, you have heard... Listen, read Full Metal Alchemist, or watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And me being a fan of her other work, Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon? Have you heard about it? Silver Spoon. <laughs> I had no expectations going into this manga. I didn't know if we were getting a Hunter Hunter story, if we were getting like a Dragon Ball type story, if we were getting a Berserk story. I honestly really had no idea, and I'm very thankful for that, because going in as blind as I possibly could, really helped me with not knowing what genre of story this is trying to tell being completely open and realizing that the story while it might be wrapped in a shonen seinen genre i think this story has the possibility to have fantastic characters because it cannot be understated that in six chapters they have crafted these characters that are so ambiguous it's it's the gray characters. They're not all good. They're not all bad. Legitimately, our main characters are main for life because they went against this code that's set in this world. So they are not pure good. There are lines they're willing to cross if they think that it's for themselves or for others. And then we are introduced to kind of villains that are they villains? What kind of story have they had up until this point to bring them here? In a lot of manga, you're like, that's the villain. Hey, listen, he look at it. Look how evil he is. He's the villain. No redeeming qualities, no ambiguity. He's the villain. They're the heroes, obviously. And it was refreshing to be like, well, who's the heroes and who's the villains? And what kind of fine line are we walking where heroes become villains and villains become heroes? In such a short amount of time, it was incredibly impressive. I think the pacing is perfect. It's a perfect blend of quiet moments with characters while it also adds comedy action. And it keeps you wanting to know more, turning the pages. I, I did this in one sitting and it was one of those manga when you read, right? That you're like, oh, 45 minutes passed, an hour passed, however long it takes you to read a volume. And you're like, felt like 10 minutes. I was so enthralled with this story. I have no idea how much time passed. I just know that I enjoyed every moment of it. But what surprised me most with Full Metal Alchemist was the questions and the philosophy that it posed, which was just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do something. And what gets me so excited to continue reading this series 
are the brothers. And that thin line of are they the heroes or the villains and the brotherly love and connection that they have where they need each other. They're the balancing act. They are balancing each other on this line. And I cannot wait to see what kind of things happen to them and the stories that are told about them as they balance on this line. And are they going to lose themselves just to save their mother? Or are they going to give in and go as far deep and dark as possible? Or are they going to rise to the occasions and become these great characters and these great heroes? And what are they going to learn along the way? Because if all of these questions and things were posed in six chapters, what is this author going to do with 50, 100? I don't know how long this series goes. But I cannot wait to read the second volume of Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, I had such a good time reading this series. Please let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a video on volume two because I'm going to read volume two regardless, but I would love to know if you guys enjoyed this video. You know, this series was hyped up. I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. You're always going with expectations of like, oh, too hyped up. I, it's not going to live up to the hype. To me, it exceeded the hype. So yeah, as always, I appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. It means the world to me. And I hope that if you're having a bad day, gets better if you're having a good day up comes fantastic i'll see you next time no no we've already talked about no we're not going to you just never it's burned in here you just never forget